view to history is that we had the prehistory, we had history, we had Middle Ages, we had, we had modern times. In the Arab world, there is no such a definition. In their view, there is history, which started with the prophet, peace be upon him, and continues until this very day. Just to give you one example, the rift, the struggle, the bloodshed between the Sunnah and the Shia, it started at the minute when Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, closed his eyes forever. The debate and the struggle about who will succeed him started, but until this very day, the struggle which started then is still bleeding. So we have to immediately to take into account that when we are talking about the Islamic view to Jews, this is something which is different. Let's ask the question, where and when and why the hatred for Jews started in the Islamic uh, era? I claim, and I can prove it, that the hatred to Jews started more or less in the year 610 when Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, started bringing the message from Allah which was revealed to him to the tribe of Quraysh, the revelations which descended upon him from Allah by Gabriel the angel. His tribesmen in Mecca heard his stories about Adam and Eve and uh, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the Israelites in Egypt and uh, Solomon and David and Jesus and Johannes. They accused him for recycling the stories, a satir, the stories or the legends of the first ones means the Jews and Christians. And I highly recommend to read the Quran in any language. You will see how many stories are brought into the Quran from the Torah, from the uh, prophets, from the Ketuvim, from uh, the Midrashim, from the exegesis, from the Talmud, from the Mishnah. Many Jewish sources, especially Yemenite sources, are embedded in the Quran already later in the Hadith as well. How did it happen? Very easily. Muhammad has a friend named Ka'ab. And he was Jew, a Jew from Yemen who left Yemen and moved to the north, to, to the Hijaz, to Mecca. And he was one of the companions of uh, Muhammad. Apparently he was the one who was the source of the Jewish material which was embedded into the Islamic sources, Quran and the Hadith. So, from the beginning, Judaism was a challenge. In order to answer this challenge, he developed all kinds of stories that Abraham was not a Jew, neither a Christian. He was Hanif, means a person who believes in Allah, in the one single deed, without being affiliated with any religion. The Quran says in one verses, in Nadina in the Lail Islam, the religion at Allah's is only Islam. Islam is Deen al haq means the religion of truth, while Judaism and Christianity are Deen al batil means the religion of void or cancelled religions. In order to establish the idea that Islam is a valid religion, independent religion, which is uh, uh, which came by, by, uh, directly from Allah, he needed to create a situation where Judaism and Christianity do not exist anymore. Otherwise, how can he face this allegation that Islam is no more than Asatir al awwalin means the stories or the legends of the first ones. So I would, I would say, that from the beginning, 
Muslims, since the first Muslims, since Muhammad, are obsessed with the fact that Judaism and Christianity remind people, or oh, the stories of Islam remind people about the stories of Judaism and Christianity. And this question mark above Islam, whether it is a valid, independent, original religion, is already since the year of 610, more or less, when Muhammad started his revelation. The next problem when it comes to, to Judaism is the issue of Jerusalem. The issue of Jerusalem is a long and complicated uh, story, how Jerusalem became holy for Muslims. But what happens, uh, uh, especially in modern times, every claim of Jews to Jerusalem, especially in modern times, uh, is interpreted by Muslims as a return of the Jews to their land, to their capital, and to rebuild the temple. Because if they do, mm. Judaism will actually mm. come back to life, mm. will come to be a relevant religion, since it returned to its land, its capital, and its house, the, the, the temple. <coughs> so what will be Islam, who came to the world to replace Judaism and Christianity? It is an issue of religion before anything else. In the Quran, of course, already, the Jews are the descendants of uh, swines and apes. The Jews are those who killed the prophets. This is something which he received from Christianity, apparently. The Jews are, according to the first chapter of the Quran, the Fatiha, the, the exordium, uh, Jews are those upon whom the wrath of Allah rests forever, and the Christians, by the way, are those who went astray. Jews forged and uh, changed the Holy Scriptus uh, in order to erase all the names of Muhammad, which uh, uh, were once in the, in the Bible. This is why Allah got angry at them and took the gospel from them and gave, them, gave it to the Christians, which in their turn uh, betrayed Allah and he gave the gospel to the Muslims, who uh, are today the, the messengers of Allah uh, only. La takum sa'a means the end of, the, end of time will not arrive until the Muslims uh, uh, fight the Jews and kill them to a degree that if a Jew will hide behind a tree or a rock, even the, tri uh, even the tree or the rock will say, hey Muslim, come, a Jew is hiding behind me. Means the whole universe, the whole nature will fight against the Jews, not only Muslims. When it comes to more modern times, you can see that the attitude to Judaism as something which should be hated and cancelled was influenced by the West. The West was introduced to the Islamic world uh, as of the beginning of the 19th century, mainly because of the French invasion to Egypt and Napoleon, who did it in 1798. And uh, the fact that uh, Muhammad Ali, as of 1805, started to send, as I said, Wufud delegations to Europe to learn technology, mathematics, physics, archi uh, architecture, uh, engineering, all these things which were already much more developed in Europe compared to the Arab world, especially Egypt. So Muhammad Ali, who was the ruler of Egypt almost for 50 years, in the first half of the 19th century, he understood that the, there are things which we Egyptians should acquire from the West. And those people came to Egypt in order to teach in Egypt mathematics, physics, chemistry, chemistry, architecture, and so forth, whatever they learned there. But they also brought to Egypt uh, echoes of the uh, European culture. 
including the hatred to Jews. And other sources of uh, hatred to Jews was the Christians who lived in the Middle East and wanted to become um, the leaders, as they were for a while, of the Arab nationalism, especially in Lebanon and Syria. And for, so for them, the Christian view to the Jew was embedded into the Arab nationalism. Because they thought that nationalism will replace Islam, because according to Islam, they are second, uh, second class, because they are Christians. So definitely Christianity in the Arab world helped uh, Western anti-Semitism, which was Christian in its origin, to emigrate also to the, also to the East. And all, the Middle East became the meeting place or the junction where Islamic anti-Jewish sentiment uh, met the Christian anti-Jewish sentiment, things became more acute in 1948 after the establishing of the State of Israel. And not to mention there, the anti-Jewish sentiments which engulfed the Arab world. So uh, when we come to what we call modern times after the State of Israel was established, now they have a good reason. Because now it's something which is al already has a shape of a state of Jews which occupied an Islamic country named Palestine. And as you, you, as you know, a, a land in Islam is only one way ticket to enter Islam. A land cannot get out of the Islamic rule. The reason why they keep saying that they will never, not in thousand years, recognize Israel as a Jewish state or even a state of the Jews. Mm. Because this is against the basic uh, idea of Islam. The Jews should live as Ahl Dhimma, as mm. Dhimmis, as second or third or fourth class citizens under the rule of Islam. We can very easily see how Western ideas, uh, especially of the protocols of the elders of Zion, uh, become something very very uh, uh, popular in the Arab and the Islamic world. I don't know if you know, but President Mubarak of Egypt rebuilt the Library of Alexandria mm -hmm. with the big help of the world. And he dedicated a room to almost every culture in the world. And he has a display, two books, which is most important for every culture. What were the two most important books in the Jewish room? One was the Bible, and the second was the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. <laughs> when the Israeli ambassador visited this place, I think he's the one who cut the ribbon of this room, he was surprised, totally surprised, to see the book of the Elders of Zion in this, in this display. So he complained immediately, and he wrote some letters, and again letters, and it took them some months until they removed it. Because maybe they didn't want, maybe they, were, they, they didn't believe him that this book, is a forger, this book is a forgery. Because as you might know, this book is very popular in the Arab world, and I'll show you why. I'll show you a big collection of editions of the protocols. How many times it was published, maybe translated or edited.
think we have like 30 editions of the protocols, which definitely are a meeting of what something which came from the West with what they want to show here in, in, in the East, uh, which is based on religion, because those Jews, and you could see very easily how much a Judaism in, the, in its religion, religious manifestations were embedded into these books, because they actually the war is a religious, religious war against the Jews before it is anything else.